Hey guys and welcome to this video. In this video we'll be proving the proportionality theorem which states that if we have a triangle and we have a line drawn inside this triangle in a way that this line is parallel to one side of the triangle then the length of AD over DB would be equal to the length of AE over the length of EC. Now to understand this proof you first have to understand three concepts about the heights and the bases of triangles. So the first concept is if we have a triangle and as we can see this is an acute triangle because all these angles would be less than 90 degrees. So if we have these triangles and we took this as the base of the triangle then in order to measure the height you're going to have to go from the highest point of the triangle and down to the base and the height is always perpendicular to the base. So we're going from the highest point of the triangle down to the perpendicular ground of the triangle. So this will be the height of this triangle. Now in the second diagram, this is the exact same triangle. What if we took this as the base of the triangle? Now, since this is the base of the triangle or the ground, in order to measure the height, we have to go from the ground, or you could start from the highest point, but Let's look at it like this, from the ground to the highest point of this triangle and this height has to be perpendicular to the base. And then lastly in the third diagram, if we took this as the base of the triangle, then since this is the base, the highest point of this triangle would be here. And we'll go from the height, from the highest point of the triangle I mean, down to the base and we must make sure that that line is perpendicular to the base because we always take the perpendicular height, meaning from the highest point of the triangle to the ground of the triangle. So now that we can see how to measure the height and to identify the base when we have an acute triangle, let's look at an obtuse triangle. So this is an obtuse triangle. It's obtuse because it has one angle that is more than 90 degrees. So we can see that this is bigger than 90 degrees. So in this obtuse triangle, if this was the base of this triangle, now in order to find the triangle's height, we would have to go and find the highest point of the triangle. And so we can see that this is definitely the highest point of this triangle. Now we cannot measure from here going down like this. This will not be the height of the triangle. This is just the length of this side of the triangle. Because remember, the height always has to be perpendicular to the base, to the ground of the triangle. And we can see that this is not 90 degrees, this is an obtuse angle. So in order to measure the height of an obtuse angle, you start from the highest point and you move down to the perpendicular ground. And how we know which what will be the ground of the triangle is we take the base and we extend it. And when we extend it, we are measuring from the highest point to the perpendicular ground or the extended base. So in this case, this would be the height of this triangle. So this is just so that you could understand how to find the base and the height of the triangles, given that you have an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle. So that's the first concept you have to understand. The second concept is if we are given two triangles and these triangles are the triangles ABC and the triangle ADC. So if we're given these two triangles, we have to be able to identify the base and the heights of these triangles. So the base of the triangle highlighted in purple, that would be BC. We can take that as the base of the triangle. And then the base of the triangle highlighted in blue, that would be CD, that would be that base. Now to find the height of these triangles, notice that they are being drawn from the same point in order to determine the height, you always have to go from the highest point of the triangle to the perpendicular ground of the triangle. So we're drawing a straight line, a vertical line down perpendicular to the ground of the triangle. So this is our height. So from this, we can see that the triangle ABC and the triangle ADC are sharing a height because they are being drawn from the same point. So triangles that are drawn from the same point have the same height. 
Then the third concept is about triangles that are drawn between parallel lines. So if we're looking at the triangle ABC, the red triangle, we can clearly see that the base is BC. Also looking at the triangle DBC, the base is also BC. Now, if we want to find the height of, let's say, the red triangle, we'll go from the highest point of the triangle down to the perpendicular ground of the triangle. So this would be the height of the triangle. And if we were trying to find the height of the blue triangle, we would also go from the highest point of the triangle, which is D, to the perpendicular ground of this triangle. Now, as you can see, because they lie between parallel lines, their heights would be exactly the same. Because parallel lines just means that the lines are slanted in the same way all through. And so the heights are exactly the same. So if you had parallel lines like this, if you looked at a length from one part of the parallel line to the other part, it would be exactly the same as from here to here, as long as it's a vertical line. So if we ever have a triangle and it's line between parallel lines, then it means that their heights are exactly the same. Now for these triangles, in this case, the base would also be exactly the same because we can see that they are sharing the base BC. Okay, so now that we've looked at those three facts, we can go on to proving this theorem. So remember, we have to prove that the length of AD over DB is equal to AE over EC. So clearly we have to have these lengths included. And the best way to have these lengths included is using the area of triangles. Okay, so now to prove this theorem, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct. So we're going to construct heights, first of all. So we're going to look at this triangle, but I want you to look at it as EAD. So we're going to construct a height for this triangle. So we start from the highest point, which is E, and then we move down to the line AD and it is a line that is perpendicular to AD and let's go ahead and call that H for height so we're also going to write down everything we construct so we're going to construct height H from E to line AD so now we have constructed this height choosing AD as our base the next height we're going to construct, or rather the next base we're going to choose, since we have to say AD over DB and then AE over EC, we're going to use AE as a base. So since AE is our base to construct the height, we have to go from the highest point of this triangle, looking at AE as our base. So the highest point would be D. So we go from D and we move down to the line AD and it's a line that is perpendicular to AE. And I'm going to just go ahead and call that K. So I'm going to say construct height K from point D to line AE. Okay, so now from our proof, now that we have AD as a base and AE as a base as well, we need to include DB as a base as well. So we're going to look at this triangle. I'm going to look at DB. How can DB be a base? Well, if db is a base right now, it's not going to work out because we don't really have any triangle. And so because of that, we're going to form a triangle. If you join the line B and E, let me change the color of that instead. So let's join B and E. Then we have a triangle. We have the triangle BDE and its base is BD. So there we go. So we're going to tell them that we constructed the line BE. We join those points. Okay. And then we can also look at EC, we need to also make that a base of a triangle. So in order for EC to be a base, we would have to have a triangle here. And so we have to connect the points D and C. So if we connect that, then we have a triangle DEC and EC is our base. So construct lines BE and DC. Okay, now we can go ahead and find the areas of these triangles. Remember, we are taking these as the basis of the triangle. So we're looking at AD as the base of this triangle. So if you looked at this triangle, it's really the triangle EAD, but I'm just going to call it ADE because it's still the same thing. I'm just naming it in a different order. So if we looked at the area of triangle ADE 
and we put it over because we have AD over DB. We're going to put it over the area of the triangle that has DB as a base. So we have our DB as a base and this will be the triangle BDE. And so this will be equal to, let's look at the area of triangle ADE. We know that the formula for the area of a triangle is a half multiplied by your base multiplied by your height. So we're saying a half multiplied by our base being our AD multiplied by our height, which is H. We call that H over. And then we have a half multiplied by our base, which is DB multiplied by our height. Now, if you look at the triangle BDE, remember that you have to measure the height from the highest point of the triangle to the perpendicular ground. If you look at this angle here, this is an obtuse angle. This angle is greater than 90 degrees. So if you kind of tilt your head and you look at it, you can see that this is an obtuse triangle. And so the height is measured from E down to the perpendicular ground, which is the part of the line AD. So we can see that the height is H as well. So multiply by H. And so because of that, we have a half and a half can cancel each other, they'll divide, and then H and H can cancel. And so we're left with AD over DB. Okay, so we're getting somewhere, we've got the first part. And now to find this part, we would have to do the exact same thing that we did here. So we're going to take AE as the base of a triangle, and we're going to find the area of this triangle. Okay, so we are saying the area of this triangle is the same triangle, ADE, but we're looking at AE this time as the base. So triangle of ADE, area of triangle. So the area of the triangle ADE is over, again, because we want EC as a base again. So we're going to take EC as a base, and when we want EC to be the base, we can see that we're clearly speaking about the triangle CED. So we're saying the area of the triangle CED. And this will be equal to, again, a half multiplied by our base of this triangle is AE multiplied by the height of this triangle is from here, the ground of AE, to the highest point. So it's this height K. So multiply by K over. And then the area of triangle CED, again, it's a half multiply by the base, which is EC or CE, multiply by the height, which we would measure from looking at EC being the base, go to the highest point of the triangle and move down to the perpendicular height, the perpendicular ground of this triangle. So we can clearly see that this would also be, the height of this triangle would be K. So multiply by K. And then a half and a half would cancel, K and K would cancel. And then we'll be left with AE over EC. Okay, so now we have this other part of the proof of this theorem. The only thing we have left to do is to make them equal to each other. So we have to find reasons for the area of the triangle ADE being equal to the area of triangle ADE. And already from saying that, you can see that we're talking about the exact same triangle. The area of ADE is exactly the same as the area of ADE because it's the same triangle. So we can go ahead and tell them that. But area of ADE is equal to area of ADE. So, so all we have to do now is find reasons for why the area of triangle DBE would be equal to the area of triangle CED. Okay, so I want you to look at these two triangles, but this time you're going to look at it from a different angle. So look at it as B, D, E, but this time look at the base of this triangle being D, E. Then look at the green triangle. We have D, E, C. And we can also see that the base of this triangle can also be D, E. So because of this, the triangle BDE and the triangle CED, they have the same base, which is DE. But then again, there's another thing about these two triangles. They lie between parallel lines. And remember, if triangles lie between parallel lines, then it means that their heights are exactly the same because we will measure their height from the base to the highest point of the triangle, from the base 
to the highest point of this triangle. This will be the height. And the height will always be perpendicular to the ground. So this is the extended face. So because of that, the area of triangle BDE and the area of triangle CED would also be exactly the same. So we can go ahead and say that the area, oh, so okay, it's a triangle and triangle. So the area of triangle BDE is equal to the area of the triangle CED because, because they have the same base DE and equal heights because the triangles lie between parallel lines. And so because of that, we can go ahead and say that this means that the area of triangle ADE over the area of triangle BDE is equal to the area of triangle ADE over the area of triangle CED. And so because of that, we know that the area of triangle ADE and the area of triangle BDE simplified to AD over BD or rather DB and the area of triangle ADE again this simplified to AE over EC okay and that's how we prove that theorem